hi guys welcome to pixel affair it's gobby here so today's video is a video about one of my earlier tutorials that i did about how to make this tetris um object looping animation right so if i go back uh, into my to, uh, you can see this is the original video that i did right tetris building block with cinema 4d and mograph and Voronoi fracture and i got a lot of questions concerning how our texture so someone was asking how i'll actually colorize the um tetris like the one the original actually this was done based on an ig post that i saw and the person was asking how i'll do the colorization in the ig post another person also down here was also asking the same thing if i could do the same thing like in the original video and i got a couple of questions about three of them also on my ig asking the same thing on how i'll colorize the same thing so i realized i probably will have to do a video on it so let's actually dive in it and this is basically how i'm i actually eventually colorize it so to do that let's actually get into cinema 4d and see how we'll do that so i have this scene here and this is the same scene if you want to know how to go about the whole process you basically can watch that video and it will show the process from scratch so after everything was done we bake everything into alembic and that makes them one object right so now you can't actually sort of colorize the individual chunks like easily right and to be able to get access to the individual chunks, it's very simple. It's as simple as using another Voronoi fracture. And all I have to do is to come into my MoGraph menu and I'll create a Voronoi fracture, drop it, uh, drag and drop it down, and I'll select the whole null object, which has the Alembic files. I can even individually drag the Alembic files in there, but let's put the whole null object in there. So I'll take the null object, make it a child of the Voronoi fracture. Let's select the Voronoi fracture, come to the source tab, and let's delete the point generator distribution. So let's delete it. And now you can see every individual chunk becomes, uh, has its own sort of color, random color, right? And now we can go ahead and use MoGraph effectors to colorize it. Now, before we do that, let's come to the Voronoi fracture, the object tab, and let's uncheck colorized uh, fra fra fragments. So if I uncheck it, everything goes back to um, white. Now, to affect it with our random colors, it's as simple as just coming to my uh, effectors. You can use any effector color effector that we want. But in this case, I'm going to use the random effector. And you can see it's randomizing the um, object. We don't want to randomize the position. So let's uncheck position. What we want is color. So let's set the color mode. It's set to off. Let's set it to um, effector color. And you can see now we have this random colors. Right, and you can see we have black and red in it. You can actually control the effector. If you don't want dark shades of black and all of that, you can simply come to the effector tab here, come to the min and max, and the minimum is set to minus 100. You can set it to zero so that you don't get the shades of um, black and stars in that. But if you want, you can also leave it because you're actually not going to use this as our final render. We can actually use um, redshift so we, we could create our own colors. So now that we, we've like randomized the color of our, um, objects, our Tetris, or oh, we want to limit it to just the center part where the Tetris are moving. Right. And to do that, I'll select the random effector, come to the field tab and I'll create a box field. Right. And I can see the box field is, it's down here. So it's affecting only the down part. Let's actually, um, filter. Let's on, so it's set to geometry only. So let's uncheck. That and now you can see all the objects, right? So now I'll move my filter somewhere up here. Let's put somewhere, maybe let's move it 200 centimeters upward somewhere here. So, yeah, now if our anytime our Tetris passes through, you see the color changes into one of those random colors, right? And now that's basically how you um, colorize the fragment. And one thing you have to notice that this actually then the null object is moving so because our box is still it's moving through our um random field so it will be it will be fine All right you can even make it a little bit something like that so we will be fine and you move through smoothly so that's basically how you, you colorize it using the random effector so after now now that you've generated your randomness and everything all you have to do is to now create a redshift material to actually give it a color so to do that i'll just um let's actually get a scene where 
we have enough chunks in there all right maybe somewhere here so all i have to do is come into my um materials and create a redshift material so i'll come in here and I'll create a redshift new material so my redshift material is created so let's double click on it to open the shader graph and let's bring it into our scene all right and now we will look for color user data so i'll type color user data and now you see we have color user data here and now that's what will be able to read our more graph colors so i'll just um, move this one on the side somewhere here and i'll connect the color user data straight to our diffuse color right and now in here we will tell it to look um the attribute name let's select this uh, rectangle uh, triangle and choose color right and now it will be able to read the randomness a uh, random colors that has been assigned to our Voronoi fracture so if i drag and drop this material on our Voronoi fracture i mean for now you see a black this thing a black scene let's see if i've seen it now let's bring our redshift render view so um redshift render view and we will be able to see you can see if we hit render now you can see we have our um color showing in our redshift through our redshift material let's actually create a quick dome light for us to get a bit of lighting going on in here so i'll create like quick dome light to add to it you don't want to see uh, select see the quick dome light and i've actually added an hdr um hdr hdri and image in there so let's hide the background so you can see we have our colors showing right now to control the colors to exact color, the kind of colors that we want it's as simple as let's go back into the material um double click on it to open the material graph let's bring it into our scene from our second monitor and now to control and to the the colors that we really want we can type in the ramp no look for a ramp node right and connect our um color user data in here to the input and now let's connect the output to the diffuse right so now it's going to read if i should hit render and bring back the render view it's going to read um just the grayscale colors right so you can see we don't have the colors more so now we can define the colors that we want with this particular um gradient so if we change the colors right it will now tend to the colors that we want so if i come in here let me change the black to something like orange or uh, something greenish yeah, like that right and you can see it's turning to green right and now i can click anywhere in between here to create another knot and i'll make down maybe yellow All right so you can keep adding the colors that you you want to eventually get something that you think you are cool with i honestly don't want this video to be a long one so i'll basically end it here but i hope you actually get the concept and the idea and you can actually continue from here and do something interesting with the colors and um, hope you enjoyed it and this was useful as well thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one soon